This channel, our journey has taken us to a very, very, very big subject. The challenge is thrown at us. We've seen it and we we'll observe it. And so we have no choice but to put it all before you. The topic of today, titled The Demystification of Pan Africanism. Pan Africanism, I mean, the threat of Afrocentrism and the illusion of continentality across the African continent. We have no choice. Leadership is called. And we can see how efforts are being made to mislead see people who are pretending to be fighting for you to claim the are Of course, when leadership calls in an environment of free for all, democracy, why not? Everyone must be free to speak their mind. But we who believe in the true democracy must be heard and heard clear. The nations on the African continent and their national are at a crossroad again of whether to continue putting their entire faith of their post independent viable nations in the illusionary vision of the continental government that is the African Union under the obsolete banner of Pan-Africanism or alternative opt for the more viable regional governments like the ECOWAS, the SADC, the Maghrib, the East African Economic Community and the Central African Economic Community. In other words, we of West Africa have before us the option of choosing whether we want the economic community of West African states in the face of an ever competitive and marginalizing world order. What choice have we? Do we have to sit down looking at another version of United Nations of a continental nature to decide our fate and destiny in this competitive world. The African continent, like any of the other four continents of the world, and that is the North American continent, the South American continent, the African continent itself, the Asian continent, and the European continent, these are the five continents of the world. It's a very huge land that is the African continent, whose pre Euro era of history, that is before the advent of the European, experienced record of internations, empires, religious, ethnic, and tribal conflicts involving internal oppressors and internally oppressed people. The era following the Second World War, however, with the formation of the United Nations, ushered in the opportunity for every nation in the world that is a colony of another to be given its independence for the nation to assume the full membership of the United Nations. The colonies on the African continent found themselves faced with taking the opportunity of assuming their independent status like what happened to nations on continents across the world where 
nations exist as colonies talking about the indians you are talking about lebanon you are talking about syria you are talking about guatemala in south america you are talking about panama so many canada and so on how do they also get their independence the nations fighting for their independence soon realized that and i mean on the african continent having cluster of independent nation within the same proximity guarantee a form of security against neighbors still under colonization in addition the fighting nations had every reason to give encouragement to one another for all the nations to fight against all form of external occupations especially when those to grant the independent were for dragging. Pan-Africanism at this time became the umbrella of mobilizing resources across the continent to fight in the expulsion of all external occupations. Every country on the African continent whose sense of nationhood as at 1945 including the apartheid south africa had the opportunity to be independent each now is a full-fledged independent member of the united nations the post-independent era on the african continent has now made the pan-africanism that is the contest an obsolete project the irony is no single country on the African continent can boast of meeting the dreams and aspirations of the nationals of such nations that they had for generations after. The reality is independence has become meaningless to the majority of the people of the nations on the African continent. The powerful sense of Pan-Africanism that gave birth to the Organization of African Unity, OAU, and later the African Union has clearly run its course with no hope in sight after each attaining its independence. Now is the time to focus and direct the energy of the people to their respective regional authorities so that the sense of stakeholders or owners sentiment critical to the mobilization of the masses by the ego-driven political actors can be invoked for the right cause the most important focus here is to demystify the aura associated with pan-africanism to free the misdirected mindset that came with the struggle of the 1960s independent era the question that we ask ourselves is what do we mean by the demystification of the of pan-africanism yeah it's a good question what do we mean we are talking about demystification that is there's a myth around pan-africanism and we want to demystify it so that things will be clear to all of us the demystification of pan-africanism is about exposing the myth and the ambiguities associated with the illusion confusing people into believing in the actualization of the single african continental government it's an illusion the idea of one continental powerful government with a common army, common currency, and a common continental passport to free all Africans from external oppression and eliminate imperialism, colonialism, and neocolonialism is actually utopian. Therefore, it is in the best interest of all West Africans in particular seeking self-determination to join us at the ECOWA Citizens' Rights Advocate, ECDRA, and focus on making our ECOWAS work. As we earlier explained, the sustenance of Pan-Africanism is a laudable idea, 
when it means a powerful uh, continental government for the African continent against the powerful external governments of the world like the United States of America, China, Russia, India, European Union, and the United Kingdom, and even so on in relation to the continental self-determination. This made the idea of sustaining Pan-Africanism in the post-independent era for a possible chance of using it in the pursuit of self-determination, which may not be achievable on the basis of smaller post-colonial government worded, worthy of trying. The idea of a common post-independent continental government of the African continent started becoming less feasible as each country focuses on its own internal challenges, making a continental government by force a dangerous project with the possibility of leading to an all-out war among the African countries and their external backers for a possible third world war, if not handled properly. The above concern killed the project before it kills everyone. Apart from the fact that the democratization of the then Organization of African Unity, OAU, and later the AU into a continental government is practically impossible. Pan-Africanism suffers from what I call Afrocentrism. Pan-Africanism suffers from Afrocentrism, ethnocentrism, tribalism, Marxism, and communism that are each incongruent with democracy taken for capitalism. Afrocentrism is the notion that the black race is one single nation and it holds the belief in black superiority over white race in place to counter the Eurocentrist claim of white supremacists. The challenge faced by Pan-Africanism is the confusion caused by the individual who associate the concept of Pan-Africanism with Afrocentrism. How possible is it easy to separate the two, Pan-Africanism and Afrocentrism? This confusion led to interracial conflict when, in reality, the two are not actually supposed to be the same. When Afrocentrism claims or Afrocentrists claim that every black man is an African and every African must be a black person, Pan-Africanism becomes a platform for fighting against every white person by racial infused hate at the expense of other more important issues. History then becomes all about the transatlantic slave trade and colonization to make everything to be about black people against white people all over the world. The black vision or black version of the Ku Klux Klan then start being the heroes and the sheroes leading to a continent, a continent leading the continent to hate against the realities of industrialization that result in essentials like food, clothing, housing, healthcare, and education for all. Job for more and the basic need of life for all become less priority in favor of advocacy for hate. This becomes even more complicated when we consider that not all Africans are black-skinned people and not all inhabitants of the African nations are blacks if we consider the continent as Africa. The confusion then calls for a reconsideration of the idea of Pan-Africanism so that decent people seeking realistic solutions to external challenges are not mistaken for self-arrogated a good-driven black supremacists. Another challenge to Pan-Africanism arises when its interpretation becomes synonymous with continentalism. 
The idea of continental effort in the fight against common external oppression does not necessarily mean being automatically in favor of a common continental government to every nation on the same continent. The leadership of the Afrocentrist continentalists are often not interested in the idea of democracy of the regional institution just as they do at the continental level that is african union level because many afrocentrists are actually marxist communist and ethno tribalists who view democracy as a capitalist agenda they see regionalism as lesser people or regionalists as lesser people who are the betrayers of their race many of us grow up with the idea of pan-africanism influenced by the afrocentrism and continentalism that work very well with the 1960s struggle for independence for almost 70 years now we have continued to live under the illusion of continental government of Africa with the common army, currency, passport, and borderless nations. However, what we have ended up with is a continental institution based on charters, conventions, and treaty rules meant for a continental authority that lack the capability of, feeling, of, of fulfilling our aspirations. Our Afrocentrist continentalist mindset has made it difficult to see the regionalist option as a more viable alternative to the skewed racist ethno-tribal Afrocentrism. We still have the Afrocentrist daily crying Kwame Nkrumah, Kwame Nkrumah, Chilosi Nrere, Mwalimu Kabaraki Nrere, Jomu Kenyatta, Nelson Mandela, and so on, failing to even mention Muammar Gaddafi to whom they used to go to for funding. When they were hungry, when he was alive, they go for, 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 for food. Sure. Gaddafi was not a black man, isn't it? And therefore, not an African to the Afrocentrist. Rather, they resort to names like Martin Luther King, even though he's an American. Yes, and Marcos Gavi, and uh, people like uh, uh, um, uh, all the rest who were in the so-called American Pan-Africanist agenda. We have, we even have the Professor Emeritus, OLP, Bulumum, inventing names and creating historical account around names that really, really mean nothing by blindly following Af our Afrocentrist of today, whom I call the literacy day saints, who are now replacing the, the redeemed leaders. Yes, redeemed Church of Christ, who travel first class across the world, preaching the gospel, making money out of the vulnerable, misleading people. Now we have our Afrocentrist who are all over the place. On a day, you get about seven notifications of YouTube. Don't they have anything better to do than entertaining people all over the place? Making a mess, misleading people just because of the little. That those calling others corrupt are nothing but an embodiment of corruption being organized to go around talking and talking and entertaining in the name of educating by blindly following Afro, our Afrocentrist and their communist ego-driven ideology, which look down upon democracy as a capitalist agenda, except the democracies of the countries. Yes, we now see them fighting for the democracy of the countries, insisting the colonies must be democratic. But 
the continental government or the regional government, no democracy. Because it's at the colony level that the ex-colonialists and external powers are taking advantage of the people. Yes. And the poor people go and watch them deliver speech. The speech meant to be speeches of hope. We find ourselves opposing a democratic ECOWAS and accepting an unelected legislative arm in our West African lawmaking institution, which is illegal. Unlike the EU, our ignorance has left us with an ECOWAS where our regional laws are based on secondary instruments like charters, conventions, and treaties best suitable, suitable for the UN type of institution. The EU's reality of a full functional legislative arm is resulting into primary law enacted by the EU Parliament, which EU members of parliament directly elected by the EU electorate as nationals of member nations. This seems odd to us when it comes to our ECOWAS and peace. We have therefore ended up with confused ECOWAS citizens grappling with poorly functioning ECOWAS passport, Shambol shambolic free movement of people, goods, and capital governed by ECOWAS treaties, charters, and hopeless conventions. The demystification of Pan Africanism, in which we expose the ego-driven Afrocentrist is a must if the madness have to stop. Thank you very much for watching this video. My humble self once again, Kofi Ali Abdul Yakin. Having watched this video to this point, I now want to believe you are waking up to your own responsibility and you are becoming aware that Pan-Africanism, those who shout daily about Pan-Africanism, don't fight for you. They are fighting for their selfish ego. Don't allow yourself to continue to be the victim. Pan-Africanism, the best we can get out of Pan-Africanism, we've got it already. The African Union as our African continental United Nation is there. So we don't need to go to New York for them to bully us. We can have our own continental United version of nations and have tit -a -tat on continental level. But that, like United Nations itself, doesn't put food on the table. It doesn't put clothes on the skin. It doesn't provide education for our children. No, 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 no. That United Nations Charter, no, no. African, African Union would never do that. It will never, never, never give us houses. It doesn't create any job except for some few cronies, even taking our money in tax. So it is time for us to save ourselves. We can't sit down for our regional government, the ECOWAS authority to continue that way. We must join hands, stand shoulder to shoulder. You can all see on the issue of Niger. Now those we have left the ECOWAS to have messed it all up. They've messed up everything. Now we have nations that were once with hope that one day we will have a working ECOWAS. They've now become, their eyes are open that our ECOWAS is actually working for France. It's working for Europeans rather than working for us. And it's all now open. In fact, those who can't stand it anymore, where the kind of ECOWAS of treaties that we have, where countries can go behind and sign contract with foreign government, powerful government. You have France all over the place. You have America all over the place with their military bases. You have, you have Britain all over the place. This must stop. And our ECOWAS has taken its rightful role in creating jobs, in the industrialization, in serious business, in making laws that start with us. It's not too late. 
nobody forced any country in West Africa to be democratic. We chose to be democratic. And no one, no one would force anyone if the ECOWAS is working, if we make ECOWAS work, those who are gone will come for now out of fear that France will attack them or the so-called the stooges of France from West Africa will attack them. So they form a union to defend themselves. And I believe they have a right to do so. But that is only temporary. We have hope in ourselves that our brotherhood of 15 nations shall see the day we shall all smile i'm here again with your book the secret of great nations sorry i'm holding it upside down sorry the secret of great nations yeah sovereignty this book says it all in fact in our next video we'll be talking about sovereignty i think i've watched others who have made posted uh, items on youtube regarding sovereignty to be honest with you the, the answers are here this is not a subject you leave after five years of hard work and research and this is what we come up with we are going to broadcast on this program today while i'm doing that i want to say visit our website on www.ecdra.org to get your copy as promised you soon start buying this book on Amazon. Please get your copy just for £9.99p. It's look a bit expensive for some of us, but I tell you, it's worth a try. My humble self, Kofi Ali Anthony again. I'll be coming away your way again until we meet again. Remember, like, share, as usual, subscribe so that the number goes up. We will be coming back to you once again. Thank you.